Welcome to today's Conversation Podcast. Today, we are excited to present to you a man, renowned politician, veteran politician. He's a lawyer, but he's currently heading one of the most exciting political alliance called the United Kwacha Alliance. We are hosting Honorable Sakwiwa Skota, State Council. State Council, welcome to today's Conversation Podcast. Thank you very much. Uh, you say you're excited to host me. I'm the one who's excited to be here in your lovely studios. Oh, wonderful. We are glad to have a conversation with you. A lot of people know you with many facets. Some know you as a very successful lawyer uh, who's handled very prominent cases. Others know you as a politician, especially when you served as UPND vice president. Others know you as a lawmaker when you served as member of parliament, you know, for many years, I think for a decade. But first, let's start. Who is Sakwiba Skota? Um, Sakwiba Skota is a Luansha born uh, Zambian. Uh, my parents were working in Luansha when, uh, when I was born. Um, and then uh, thereafter, they moved to Lusaka. Uh, whilst I was Luansha still had two parts. There's a part, municipal mm -hmm. part, where you are either a civil servant or a teacher, or in the mines, it was dominated by the mines. Which ones? Uh, my, my, my mother was a state registered nurse. In fact, the first Zambian uh, state registered nurse. Wow, yeah. that's historical. What, what's her name? Uh, Kapelwa Skota. Oh, okay. okay. In fact, if you go to uh, Levi Mwanawasa Medical University, uh, the lecture hall, which is for nurses, is named after her. So you'll see her name is the one which is on that uh, lecture theater hall. It's because she the was students the from Levi Mwanawasa University may have no idea the, 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 the hall is named after your mother. Um, no, they, they do know. Uh, and okay. they, uh, we, we are actually even uh, launching a prize uh, for the best. Uh, nursing student, which is going in her to, honor, in her honor, which ah. is going to be in her name. The people at Levi Monawasa Medical University have agreed. Uh, in fact, they're quite excited and said yes, we should do so. Um, so we're going to be starting that uh, this uh, this intake. Mm. The graduates will be getting that uh, that, that honor. Sorry, that was a, a beautiful interruption I had to do after learning that your mother was uh, the first registered nurse in Zambia. So take us through the journey from Luansha. Uh, from Luansha, uh, we were, uh, my parents were transferred back to uh, Lusaka. Uh, my father uh, originally was a, a medical assistant, and I suppose that's how they even uh, met nurse and the medical yeah. uh, assistant. And uh, he was quite uh, a politician. <laughs> you mm, know? Mm. Uh, and uh, because of that, he ran into problems and uh, could no longer uh, work under the, 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 the state. Um, he then became uh, a journalist. Mm. Um, and uh, he he had to come to Lusaka. And so he came to Lusaka. Um, it, he used to work for the former Times of Zambia. What was it called then, before the Times of Zambia? And, uh, it, it was Northern Rhodesia before independence. Yes. Northern Rhodesia Times, I think. Yes, so um, that's where he, he worked. Uh, and my mother uh, came and worked in uh, Lusaka as, uh, as well. I can trace your passion for writing. Probably it comes from your father. Then the politics also. <laughs> he is also a politician. That's correct. Um, and uh, uh, because he was a politician, in our home, in and out would have uh, all kinds of uh, politicians coming in and, and so on. Uh, the Elijah Mudendas, the Scott Awinas, the after winners, um, all of those would be coming in and out mm -hmm. of our home. And uh, uh, my mother was also very political. 
Uh, she was political in that uh, she now had to start uh, fighting for uh, Zambian nurses, and she was the only state registered nurse. Yeah. And she was being treated very differently from the white. <laughs> yes, of course, the, the system favored the white nurses. Yes. Ah, okay. Even her salary was uh, different, yet she was doing the same job. It was different. Uh, accommodation was different. <laughs> And uh, she put up a very big fight, so much so that um, there was a time when uh, in the House of Commons uh, there was a debate centered around her. Wow. <laughs> One wow. of the, MacLeod, yes. uh, who was an MP, uh, brought up the issue in the thing and was asking about... Uh, Mr. What was Scott. his concerns? Um, his concern was that um, she was being discriminated against. Ah, okay. Yeah. It was a lobby for her. It was a lobby for her. Mm. Um, mm. The government officials stated, no, 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 there's no discrimination, but there was. <laughs> yeah, know? yeah. But yeah. Um, the point is that she fought so hard that it even was debated in the in, House of in Commons. In the House of Commons in yeah. London, yes, yes. yes. Um, we pick up your life. Tell us about, just briefly, about your both primary and secondary schooling. We go to university, then we, we, we venture into your, your adult life. Um, I went to primary school at uh, North Mid Primary School uh, here in uh, Lusaka um, for almost all my primary school. But uh, for one year, I was at uh, Mungu Primary School. Uh, that's because my father was transferred to Mungu as a district governor okay. in, um, in Mungu under uh, the unit government. He was there for, for a year, so that's when I was there. Uh, secondary school, um, I spent uh, three days at uh, David Kaunda Technical. <laughs> <laughs> three days? How three come days. three days? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's because um, when I went there, it wasn't the choice where I'd wanted to go. Mm -hmm. I'd wanted to go to Kablonga, mm -hmm. where my elder brother was. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there was a, a system where certain people would be selected to go to the two technical schools, the one in Livingston and uh, David Kaunda uh, here in, uh, in Osaka. So I found that I was one of those who was then selected to, to go there. Yeah. Uh, so my parents said, no, that's a prestigious school and should take it as an honor to, to go there. So I went there, but I didn't like it. Mm, <laughs> you know? mm, mm, mm. I, I didn't like it uh, and how, because I used to go and visit my, my brother at Kablonga before I went to... So I knew what Kablonga was like. Okay. Because he was, okay. A, he was a boarder there. Mm -hmm. So at times we'd go there to, to visit him. So I knew what it was like. And I said, well, I'd rather be in the other. So I then uh, demanded to be transferred. My father was not happy. He was saying, no, but this is the Your school. Your best school is, <laughs> yes, yes, the technical <laughs> uh, secondary school. But I, I'm also stubborn like he was. <laughs> <laughs> like father, like son. <laughs> yeah. So I, I then went to Kablonga. And I was in uh, Kablonga uh, until the uh, first term of uh, Form 3. Mm -hmm. uh, first term of Form 3... Uh, my father was uh, appointed into diplomatic uh, service. Ah, okay. And uh, he went, in fact, to open our embassy in France. Uh, we didn't have one uh, at the time. That, at the time. Uh, so he, he went there and obviously took his uh, kids with him. Mm -hmm. So um, over there, uh, went to uh, the American School of uh, Paris. Yes. Uh, no, first of all, the English School of Paris, sorry, mm -hmm. um, which was quite some distance away from uh, Paris. Mm -hmm. It was within the Paris, but br a greater Paris. So to get there, it would be about an hour's drive, drive and mm -hmm. so on. So after a term, I switched to the American School of Paris, which was much closer. Mm -hmm. um, a few years later, I think two years later, um, you didn't find problems. You're coming from an Anglophone country, and then you're going to 
to, to a Francophone country, France, did you have to quickly learn French? I know diplomas sometimes are shielded because you might go to an international school where you speak English. Um, I went <coughs> to a, an English-speaking uh, school, the American School of Paris and the English School of Paris. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, obviously living there, uh, you have to uh, know how to ask for bread. <laughs> <laughs> so I did pick up on, on, uh, on the French as well. But the, but the school was actually an English speaking uh, school. Mm. Yeah. So about two years uh, later, my dad was uh, transferred to uh, our embassy in Germany. Um, mm. So I had to leave the school. Now, uh, because we didn't quite know what the schools there were like and also the fact that uh, one could then be transferred and move on. Yeah. Um, my dad decided that, well, let me send them to a boarding school. So that even if I'm uh, moved, moved to wherever, I'll be, wherever moved. I'll be moved, they'll carry on with their education, especially since I was now coming to uh, the uh, examination years. Mm. Um, so then went to the International School of uh, Geneva. That's myself and uh, my younger brother. In Switzerland. Of, in Switzerland, mm. yes. Um, and that's where I uh, took my international baccalaureate. And uh, uh, after that, uh, I applied uh, to university. Um, it's very funny how I got into, into law. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, I, what did you want to be before you went into law? I actually wanted to go into computer programming. That's mm. what I wanted uh, It must have to do. been a new phenomenon at it the time. It was very new at the time, mm. and um, it captured my imagination. Yes. Um, so I told my dad that's what I wanted to do, and he was trying to discourage me. But uh, then again, I've told you that I was just as stubborn as, <laughs> as, he, as he was. So I said, no, I'm going to do um, computer programming. Uh, that's when he said, okay, let's have a trade-off here. Mm. Uh, because I was going to be applying to, to the UK. And when you apply to the UK, you apply to five universities. Mm. Okay. Mm. So in my applications, there was five. So I said, um, let's make a deal. Apply for half of them computer, half of them law. Because I think you'd make a, a good lawyer. Yeah. So I told myself, okay, I'll do that. But when they come, I'll tell them, well, I'll still go with computer. But as luck would have it, all the universities I applied for law accepted me. <laughs> <laughs> and all the ones I applied for computers did not, did didn't not. respond in time. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I ended up having to go to the, to the law. And then uh, when I looked at the various ones of them, uh, Keele University was interesting for me because it was a dual degree. Um, oh, okay. It wasn't just law. Mm. It was law and politics. Uh, okay. And with the background that I had coming from a political home and listening into these the politics. politicians, mm. politicians I said, yeah, let me also do the politics. Let me do a dual degree. So I went to Keele University. Um, not the famous German Keele. Yes, <laughs> yes. But in the UK, there's a small Keele University. And um, I did uh, a major in law and uh, politics, minor in mathematics and uh, psychology. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. I still had that uh, passion for, for the for, maths. Yes, <laughs> yes. The mathematics there shows your interest in, uh, uh, in IT. Yeah. When do you return to Zambia? I returned to Zambia after I graduated. Mm -hmm. uh, that was in 1980, I graduated. Mm -hmm. um, so I came uh, back and uh, enrolled for uh, the bar course. Um, at that time, it was called the Law Practice Institute. Mm -hmm. It's what is called the Zambia Ziade now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Zambia Institute of Advanced Legal Education. Education, yeah. yeah. Um, so S Sometimes... Uh, the, there are problems where Ziale, or before then the, the law practice school, may not convert your international uh, well, uh, yes. training 
to, to suit you. They might ask you to go back to university for the LLB. How, how was your experience there? Yeah, in fact, uh, there was the questions raised mm. uh, to say, uh, uh, is, uh, since you, you don't have an LLB, because yes. I did law and politics, they can't mm. call my degree uh, LLB. Mm. It's a Bachelor of Social Sciences. Yes. Um, so when I applied, I was saying, but you don't have an LLB. Um, I said, no, but it's just that it's a dual degree. Mm. I've done the same courses as uh, one would do, and so on. So I said, no, uh, send your curriculum and everything, uh, University of Zambia, for them to have a look at and mm. see. To verify, to verify if this is an equivalent to a LLB. Yes. Yeah. Um, at the time, the dean at uh, UNSA was uh, Professor Ndulo. Ah, Munandulo. Yeah. Munandulo, yes. Ah, okay. So it was sent there. And then he wrote back to them uh, after and said, this is equivalent. Yeah. <laughs> he qualifies. Mm -hmm. And far better because he has other, <laughs> he, it was a major, double major. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Um, so that, that's when uh, I enrolled. And uh, I'm glad I didn't embarrass uh, Professor Ndulo because, mm -hmm. uh, as you know, uh, LPI, just like Ziale, has got this uh, reputation that... Uh, of flanking many students. <laughs> yes, of flanking many students. Um, so I managed to pass first time round on first sitting and mm. with uh, four distinctions. Wow, wow, so, that was good. So I saved Professor Ndulo's uh, face by not... <laughs> <laughs> by confirming that your degree was even better than the LLB. Uh, in fact, speak to that. Why do we have so many students fail that exam? In fact, it has become a political debate because there are times when sometimes up to 400 students sit and only three or four or 10 qualify. Um, many have argued that the, you know, the, the, the pass is used to bar or restrict market entrance. It's not necessarily that the students have failed what, how have you dealt with that question? No, I don't think that uh, there is any desire to restrict the number of people who come through. Mm. I think so the that, barrier to it, market. Yeah, no. Um, I think what it is is a genuine uh, desire to ensure that people who will uh, be practicing law um, are going to be of the topmost quality. Um, you have, as a lawyer, uh, you have grave responsibilities. Mm. Um, you sometimes will represent somebody whose life, literally life, will it's depend on how you are going to handle their case. You may represent uh, uh, an entity or, a, um, or an individual whose future existence depends on you. If they fail, they will become financially ruined, bankrupt. Or they may go to jail. Or may go to jail. So they, there's a lot of responsibility when you are a lawyer. So there's a need to make sure that as far as possible, only the very, very best are going to be offering services to people because of the consequence of the practice. Oh, the practice, yes. Okay. So it's not a barrier to entry, as many have argued that. No. no, they want to restrict. Okay, okay, okay. That's good. So walk us into now practice. You finished with good distinction. Have you, are you joining a law firm, or are you going to teach? Um, b before I go into, into that, yeah. there, there's a funny story that I want to tell you about. Yeah. One of the distinctions I had... Uh, was in conveyancing. Mm. Now, at uh, LPI, and, and as you, are, you have uh, mid years, uh, that, that, uh, which sort of like to prep you for, for the actual for the exams. Actual. Yeah. Um, in the mid years, um, I failed uh, uh, my conveyancing. What happened is, uh, a question was given to, to us, a mandatory question, saying you're acting for the purchaser. Take us through all the steps you will do for the purchaser mm. and why. And I went and I wrote the answer, wrote it, uh, whatever. Um, Soli Patel was our lecturer. Mm. 
Mm. Um, and then uh, he writes on my paper, brilliant answer. If you are acting for the buyer. <laughs> <laughs> So, you, your case was for the buyer yes. <laughs> instead of the purchase. <laughs> because when I read it, I just, oh, yeah, I know this. <laughs> and so we had a, a group uh, uh, whom, when we were studying, a mm. group of us who said there were four or five of us. And now when we came to uh, the finals, mm. uh, whenever I would go in, then my other colleagues would tease me. And they would say, when you go into there, read the question. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> the seller and the buyer are totally two different people. <laughs> yeah, totally two different. <laughs> yeah, so then when you finish, was it as difficult as it is now? Because even when you have uh, lawyers qualify, first law firms are, are, are few, they remain few, and... Uh, they may not find jobs easily. Did you go teaching? Did you go law practice? And why did you make the decision? Okay. Um, w when uh, you go for uh, LPI, was Yale now, uh, part of it is practical. So you have to be attached to a legal firm. Mm -hmm. I was privileged to be attached to one of the top legal firms in Zambia, Soli Patel, Hamir, and Lawrence. Okay. That's where I did. Uh, one advisor. of your lecturers, actually, a partner to, was two, one of two your lecturers. Of, two of them. Ah, two of them, yes. Ah, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm almost within. Three of them, actually, mm -hmm. were, were lecturers uh, there. Uh, Soli Patel was lecturer in convincing. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. he passed away uh, um, just recently. Ali Hamir was a lecturer in uh, conveyancing, uh, mm. sorry, in uh, uh, commercial, uh, civil procedure. Conveyancing was uh, Soli Patel. Mm -hmm. And uh, for uh, family and divorce, Judge Lawrence. Ah, okay. And then okay. he wasn't a judge. He, uh, mm. he was uh, Mr. Lawrence then. Mr. Lawrence was uh, the lecturer. So three of them actually mm. <laughs> from that. <laughs> from the partnership where you were attached. Yeah, so yeah. that tells you the, the quality of that mm. firm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. um, so after I was called to the bar, I then uh, joined uh, uh, the government and um, I was employed at the National Institute for Public Administration, NEPA. Ah, the school for, for then, for civil servants? Yes. Mm. Um, and uh, so I was lecturing to civil servants, uh, to some other people like valuers and also um, people in the medical. Mm. Uh, the people in the medical, um, there was a specific course for them, which was medical legal ethics. Okay. So okay. I, I, I was uh, lecturing to them in, in that. Um, How is NIPA then? You know, there's a huge debate about the quality of our civil servants and that they're not qualified. Even if they're qualified, they're not experienced. And... Uh, civil service is literally a separate jungle. People think because they're very educated, they think they can just become civil servants. Then they find the nightmare of the civil service. You've recently he uh, heard President Hagainde Echilema complain again and again that these procedures in the civil service, they, they, they like, are difficult to make your work. He is he, frustrated with the processes and procedure in the civil service. He thinks they stand in the way. What is the purpose of NIPA and why do you think it made the civil service important? I think that uh, NIPA is very, very important. Um, the civil service regulations are very, very important. Uh, it makes sure that things are done in a proper way. Um, if you're going to disregard them and think that they stand in your way and so on, you'll have a complete mess. And I think that it shows in terms of, if you look at, uh, uh, let's take Ministry of Energy. Yeah. The number of times they've floated tenders for people to bring in fuel and so on, and then a few days later or two weeks later, they cancel those tenders and re-tender again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the Ministry of uh, Tourism, tenders were given out 
Cancel. People even uh, told that you are going to be given these licenses. Those licenses are stopped. It has to go to court, and there is all this mess now, uh, which is there. The court says, "No, you did it wrong." Look at the Ministry of Agriculture. The number of times we've had uh, floated tenders, and then all oh, reverse them, do them again, and so on. In the meantime, time is being wasted. In the meantime, you've, you may find that uh, because now you've got very little time to bring in those essential things because you've wasted so much time cancelling, retendering, mm -hmm. cancelling, uh, it now becomes much more expensive than if you had done it in time mm -hmm. and if you had made sure that it was truly open. So that speaks to the disregard of civil service regulations. Yes, and it also speaks to the, the, the kind of damage that that brings about. Um, I've heard what you've said that uh, uh, President Akainde has been complaining that that stands in the way and so on. But um, um, I, I raised this issue when I was on uh, Lusaka radio uh, about two weeks ago and uh, was emphasizing that one of the things that uh, we feel is important to making sure that we can start having our economy run efficiently in the mm. way it should is to have a civil service which is properly uh, grounded, which knows the procedures and everything. So that you don't have um, this ridiculous situation of tender, council tender, retender, tender. Mm. If you had civil servants who know their job, there wouldn't be a need to be doing that. They would do it right from the very first uh, 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 tender. But it and may then, speak to acts and of corruption apart, and political pressure. And also, if you had civil servants who knew their job, okay. if I'm a civil servant in a, some ministry, um, I'm the permanent secretary, let's say, and the minister comes to me and says, no, you must do this. You, you must boss, give this tender to this one. You must give this tender to this one. I'll tell my boss that according to the regulations, the one who actually qualifies is this one. Yeah. If you want me to do that, put it in writing for me. And I'll do what you want, sir, but put it in writing. And you'll find that the minister will not. <laughs> no one would like to leave evidence at the no scene of crime. <laughs> no one would like to leave evidence. They will not. <laughs> yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And, and so those regulations help to ensure that even that kind of pressure can be resisted by mm. simply saying, put it in, in writing. Yeah. Um, you have now all of a sudden uh, seen uh, that the government is saying, uh, ministers should go and have this uh, three-day workshop they had where they gave themselves. Re remarkable <laughs> Honorable Scott. He, the president, you know, uh, uh, holds a workshop and he says they should go back to Nipa. So they have this three-day training. And it's then that after you have talked about the importance after, of Nipa. After I had <laughs> they talked about the importance of Nipa. And then when they're giving them the certificates, they say, um, and uh, we are going to uh, revamp uh, NIPA and start. Mm. I'm glad. I congratulate them for listening to me. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah, must yeah, congratulate yeah. HH for listening to me mm. on the issue of civil servants. So but, how long were you at NIPA? But, 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 oh, yes. yeah. uh, but um, it shouldn't just be for photo opportunity. The way I look at it, that three-day thing, I don't know even what they learned in three days and if they were actually even being there because I know how ministers behave. Um, Your training, be, how long were they when you were at NIPA? How it, long? It, would, it would be months. It's, it's not a three-day course. Wow. <laughs> it's wow. not a three-day course. So I doubt whether there is any qualitative uh, thing that they, they learned. For uh, the ministers be, in would, your time. What would be interesting is yeah. to actually call them and say, you, you went to this meeting, uh, this uh, workshop. What did you did learn? You <laughs> <laughs> I can assure you it would be... Um, uh... Yeah, correct, correct. <laughs> In your time, did NIPA also train the political establishment? It's established you will teach from permanent secretary. You will take them uh, through the processes 
of a public service and civil service. But it, did you have an opportunity to also uh, prepare the political establishment when they were appointed? No, no, they, there was uh, no training that I personally did to the political establishment. But I believe that uh, during uh, the UNIP times, um, they used to have, um, is it in Kabwe, president? Oh, the citizenship college. Yes, that is where they used to train. To take the political establishment. Take the political establishment. Ah, currently, I think, Mungoshi University, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, on that same thing about the three-day workshop, uh, what worries me is that it means that uh, for two and a half years, unprepared people have been heading Running these ministries. Government. If you are saying that there was a need for this uh, emergency three-day <laughs> workshop, mm. um, that should have been done even before they, uh, they came on to become ministers. Mm. You know? mm. um, and uh, you have permanent secretaries taken from the street. Yeah and uh, brought in to or become... taken a, from private sector. Or private mm. uh, sector. Who have never worked in the civil mm. service. Who have got no idea. Um, and obviously, that's why you see that it is not working well. And I think uh, President Akainda has recognized that by saying that, no, we are going to reintroduce. Because he's seen it's not working well. Mm. But the mistake has already been made of putting people who do not have that civil service training. There are lots of sitting civil servants who do have um, that um, experience, um, who've got that expertise. Have no, for one served. reason or another, Honorable Scotta, we the, the soup is spoiled. We've come to now label people that they are PF or they are MMD, that they are not UPND. And the civil service is, 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 is spoiled, broth, literally. Um, your experience, qualification, knowledge is disregarded in favor of this label. So you could be the most experienced civil servant, but if they say you are PF, you are done. You cannot be director, you cannot be PS. And I think that's a sad state of affairs which will probably come to uh, 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 speak later. And uh, when you do, do that, uh, people who want your position and so on, will then just go and tell the authorities, oh, no, 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 that one is the uh, PF, because they want you to be moved aside thinking then they will occupy uh, the position. You. And mm. that's the kind of thing that was uh, happening, sadly, uh, uh, in America with the McCarthyism thing, that, oh, this, that one is a communist and, mm. and so forth. Very ugly things mm. are happening. Mm. In Nazi Germany, the Jews the way they were taken out of jobs and so on. Oh, that one is a Jew mm. and so on. It, it's wrong. It's yeah. wrong yeah. and sad. No, I remember if the, the, the example you've given in, uh, in the United States where even most uh, talented artists were taken out, you know, like Charlie Chaplin and others. Yeah. Yeah, you know, Edgar Hoover just needed to say, investigate you for being communist or the, the, like you're not American enough because of your belief. We seem to be there now. But let's go back briefly to your career. So how long were you at NIPA? Did you branch out elsewhere? Um, I was there for slightly over a year. Um, and uh, whilst I was there, uh, because as a lecturer, you've got uh, very flexible times. Um, so I applied to be allowed to uh, go to the University of Zambia to do a postgraduate uh, diploma in international law and diplomacy. Um, so at the same time, I was doing that, and I graduated in uh, 1982 um, from uh, UNSA uh, mm. with that postgraduate diplomacy, diploma in international law and diplomacy. Um, whilst at uh, NIPA, I got a call from uh, my former uh, bosses uh, where I was doing uh, my attachment at Soli Patel Hami and Lawrence. Uh, Mr. Lawrence uh, was uh, being appointed to the bench, to the high court bench. So there was going to be a vacancy. Yeah. Uh, don't get me wrong. I was not being called to go ahead replace and replace. as a partner. <laughs> as a partner. <laughs> 
what happened is um, there was a junior who was there uh, by the name of Aziz Adam. Yeah. Oh, so, the famous Aziz Adam. Yes. Yeah. So mm. Aziz Adam was going to take the place of uh, Lawrence, who was now going to be judge. Mm. And I was being called to take the place of, of Aziz, Aziz Adam. Adam. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, so I, I think they came and headhunted me because I had worked there. So they had a good idea of my character. They had a good idea of my uh, work capability and so on. So they specifically headhunted me and said, would like you to come. And I was uh, honored, so I, I agreed. Because the time when I was there on attachment was a really nice uh, time. And even when I went there to, to work, this, it was, it was mm. really brilliant. Mm. You moved to where then? Um, a few years later, about three, four years uh, later, uh, there was Chicago and Company was being run by uh, Mr. Weston Musiamba. Mm. Mm. Um, and uh, Mr. Musiamba was just about to become judge as a high court he had been. Uh, he was in the process of being uh, appointed. Um, so uh, Mr. Chigaga uh, then approached me uh, to take, this time I was going to replace somebody who was going to be judge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to go and uh, replace... Uh, as a partner. As, mm. a, as a junior, junior partner. partner. Yes. Mm. Um, so that's how I left uh, Soli Patel, I mean Lawrence. Before I left, it was, it was really uh, hurting me. I had to go and see uh, uh, Ali Hamia. And then there's this, I really love what I'm doing here and everything. But there's this opportunity. This opportunity yeah. So I said, no, Saki, uh, go ahead. And whilst you're there, seeing that uh, you don't run a firm, if you have any queries or uh, you face any difficulty as to what to do, don't hesitate to come and we'll will help to, to guide you on, on um, uh, how to run the, the business. So my leaving there was uh, in good terms. Yeah. 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 Mm. So that's when uh, uh, I, I carried on there. And then two other people also joined uh, also as uh, junior partners at a later stage, uh, the late uh, Timothy Mutale. And also, uh, um, Miss uh, Mwansa, Charity Mwansa. Mm. Um, she's got her own uh, law firm now as, mm. uh, as well. Um, so at some stage, the three of us uh, then thought to ourselves, um, Mr. Chigaga is uh, not uh, practicing, doesn't look like he'll come back to practice. Why don't we offer to buy him out? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we offered to buy him out. He gave us his terms and uh, uh, how we should uh, pay. And uh, that's what we did. So we, we, we paid him off and uh, we became the partners. But we kept the, the name, the name mm. uh, Chicago and uh, Company. Um, later on, uh, he, he passed on. By that time, we had already bought it from, from him. Um, and uh, uh, we had a few people who would uh, come and say, no, no, this is uh, uh, for Mr. Chigaga. Uh, it's not yours. So oh, of course, the family and other <laughs> relatives, when they see the name and the <laughs> nameplate, they say, look, Pears is our company. She's <laughs> the one to inherit. They had no idea that uh, the partnership was already, I mean, the firm was already uh, yeah, no, sold you, to you. You told mm. them that, well, look, here's even the signed whatever, is, mm. but why is the name still? Mm. Yeah, and so we decided, well, to get past this, let's change the name. Mm. <laughs> um, but we didn't really want to because uh, the name Chicago and Company had a lot of goodwill. Yes, the, yes, yeah. yes. Uh, so that's when we Mr. Changed. Chigaga, I think, was the last minister or second last minister of finance for Dr. Kenneth David Kaunda. That's, that's right. Yeah, yes. so you are, you are right. He had a very good name in our country. Mm -hmm. 
the so political that's side of it. the two central chambers. Oh, okay, okay. The political side of your life, there is a momentous event between 1990 and 1991. There are calls to return to multi-party state. We've been a one-party state since 1973, and um, the dictatorship has really choked the country. And also, the economy is not doing well. There have been food riots. Uh, there's just chaos in the country. There have been attempted coups. In 1990, where does life find you? Do you participate in the events of 1990-91? Okay. Um, the two driving forces for uh, MMD were Mbita Chitala and Akashamba uh, Tua Liwanika. Um, Akashamba Tua Mbikusita Liwanika is actually my uncle. Okay. Yeah. And so he knew me and so on. Uh, and he must be the one who told his uh, colleague uh, Mbita Chitala that uh, maybe we should uh, go and recruit uh, this young man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so they actually came, the two of them, uh, told me what they were <clears throat> doing and what they hoped to, to achieve. And I thought, no, 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 it is a, a good thing. And so I said, well, I'm, I'm in. Um, so when uh, uh, the garden house meeting was called, I'm one of those who went there. Oh, you attended the, the, the garden meeting? I, I attended garden the, house the, meeting. the garden house meeting. Um, at the time, uh, people were so afraid of uh, Kenneth Kaunda. Oh, yeah. You know, even some big names didn't come to garden house. because The were, first day. <laughs> the first day, they were afraid. <laughs> they thought you all be rounded up. <laughs> and everybody would be rounded up. Um, uh, there's that book which was written, The Hour Has Come. Mm. Yeah. And in there, at the back, uh, they've listed the people who, who attended, attended the garden house. The garden house. You'll find my name is mm. is on that list. Okay. So um, I was not afraid of uh, KK. Mm. <laughs> you know, mm. I was thinking mm. myself, well, this is something that is necessary. No, because it was a political decision. Your father had served as a diplomat in Dr. Kaunda's government. So there are times when even things have gone wrong, you declare interest. Say, but... I may not really fight the old man because my father saved him. It's very, very interesting. Um, uh, he was UNIP. Even during the run-up to MMD, he was uh, UNIP. Um, and uh, I was MMD. <laughs> and we would uh, discuss and try to convert each other <laughs> and so on. But we'd be sitting at the same table and having a, a dinner or maybe even having a drink. Mm. Oh, and then there was one interesting uh, thing that happened. Um, one day, Dad tells me, ah, this Michael Sata is coming here. He wants to, to see me. This was just after Michael Sata uh, at that trial he had. Uh, said he's moved from UNIP in, to... Yes, uh, in 1991. Yes, mm. yeah. and then uh, he said, my job is going to be to recruit my colleagues to bring them over to MMD. Mm. So that was one of the people he... Sata targeted. Sata targeted. I was very curious as to how, it would, uh, how the meeting would go. Because like I said, those who knew my dad know that he had a very strong character. Yeah. And um, if he thought something, he would stick by it and, and all that. And then you have Sata, another person, a very strong character. character. <laughs> <laughs> Who also wants to get his way. <laughs> wants to get his way. So I don't know, I've got to somehow be in that, <laughs> that meeting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I asked that, oh, what, what drinks uh, would you like to, to have when your friend comes? Uh, he told me. So that was my opening. I said, oh, I'll get you the, the, the drinks. So um, I was uh, waiting somewhere in the house, waiting for them to, to come. Sata came and was sitting there. So that's when I went and got the stuff I had bought, put it in the, uh, in the kitchen. 
mm. and went over and asked, um, what would you like to, to, to drink and so on? Dad had his uh, wine and um, uh, Sata had his, uh, uh, his whiskey. Mm, mm. So I made sure that I uh, served them just a very little amount so that I could uh, come back again. And uh, feel and hear and him <laughs> on the conversation. <laughs> yeah, the, <laughs> that was smart. And hear the conversation. And the two of them were trying to convince each other. It even got uh, heated between the two of them. And then um, towards the end, uh, uh, I think, I can't remember whether it's dad who started or whether it started. I said, ah. You, you're just foolish. You can't be convinced. Yeah, you are also foolish. <laughs> just give me the drink. You let's just drink. <laughs> <laughs> That's how the political debate was abandoned. That's how the political <laughs> debate was abandoned. <laughs> yeah, I love that a healthy type of political debate that you can differ but maintain the personal relations. The MMD takes over, uh, and I think the next time we see you is you are defending Dr. Kaunda. Because the new government, I think, is intent on harassing the former president. He goes through trials and tribulations. The party is harassed. Uh, just speak to that period. Okay. I was very, very strongly um, MMD, very strongly. Um, and uh, even the things that I would say, uh, people knew that I was uh, MMD. The UNIP people um, definitely knew because they were saying, but how can Agri Mlala Scotta's son be <laughs> MMD? Be MMD. So they, they knew that. Um, now, when uh, MMD came into power, um, there are certain things which made me very uncomfortable, which made me feel, no, this is not what we, we say. We fought for what we fought for. Amongst the things that I didn't like was the way that uh, uh, parastatal heads were being uh, humiliated, uh, where you have camera crews coming and uh, somebody coming and telling them, you know, they're sitting in the office, you are fired, get out, get out, you know, and there's the cameras all there. But can I take this? No, you are fired, get out, you know, that kind of thing. Then you had that very embarrassing situation where uh, you go and you search uh, President uh, Kaunda. Uh, the whole day you are searching all his uh, items, and then you are there. Aha! We found two books. Yeah, that belong to State House. That belong to State House. How, 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 how can you do that? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Eh? Two books. Mm. <laughs> I mean, would he be stealing two books? Obviously, they. They, they were taken accidentally. That's, mm. I mean, it's mm. obvious. But then to make it a big thing, we found two books. Because they found was, nothing. <laughs> That's what it means. Yeah. They mm. found nothing because they went to search. Remember, there was this huge allegation that Dr. Kaunda was very rich. He had stashed $4 billion uh, abroad. You know, Mr. Michael Sata and his, yeah. uh, um, his announcements at those political rallies. The country really believed that Dr. Kaunda had $4 billion stashed somewhere, that he has an arms cachet some, somewhere. They drive this narrative, and they go to search him. They only find two books. They don't even realize that they're embarrassed to say they found two books because they expected to find the billions they talked about. True, true. And so in my heart, I was just saying, no, this is, this is not right. So I even made a statement saying, no, this is not right. The government should not be doing such things. Mm. And if this is the way it's going to be, I'm not going to be part of it. Part of, uh, part of this. Um, so when uh, uh, the zero option issue came up and uh, you had various uh, people detained and, uh, and all that, including uh, uh, Dr. Um, I was surprised to get a visitation uh, from somebody saying that uh, uh, 
they would like me to represent them. Um, I was surprised because I thought of all they, they must have heard how I, I was supportive of uh, MMD and, mm. and, and so on. Um, and uh, they said that uh, KK would actually like to, to see me. Mm. Um, I went there to, to see him. Um, and uh, he stated that uh, people like uh, Professor Mbunga and others had suggested that I join the legal team. Join the, the legal team. To our young but audience, they may, not be, they may not be aware what this zero option case, a famous case in our country, but just briefly define it. What was it? Um, it, it, was, uh, it was a document uh, which was called zero option. It was a plan. And if you looked at the plan, there was nothing uh, subversive about it. Or seditious, or about, seditious it. about it. But I think just the title, zero option, <laughs> to yeah, them is, yeah, yeah. you know, that, uh, that these people are willing to do anything. I mean, I've seen that there's nothing at all. Mm, mm, mm. And, uh, it, and it was uh, done by one person who was saying that, oh, he wants to uh, present it to his colleagues to see whether that plan of action should be done. Yeah, yeah. Um, people need to understand the political environment. There's a new government trying to reform, but the reforms are harsh on our people. The, our people are going through challenges. IMF is on the scene, subsidies have been removed, and uh, we still have a debt burden, but there is total discomfort in the country. Although the new government still has you know, this goodwill of our people, uh, but there is a lot of pain. People have lost jobs. So I think UNIP came up with that plan, a revolutionary plan, that let's not give them zero option. So it's a civil process. Conduct, uh, 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 protest, you know, join in the labor unions to protest about the suffering of the people. It was a political, I think, activism. That's but the state criminalized it like it was a potential coup. Detained uh, lots of people. Um, the state of emergency, which had been uh, uplifted in 1991, they brought back the, <laughs> the state of emergency over a document which um, one day uh, you, you should uh, perhaps bring the people who who were detained at a zero option, to just even come and uh, read Speak out. Speak to the document, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so KK uh, said, no, he wanted to see me because uh, uh, he understood uh, that from his colleagues that they thought I should join the team. And what he wanted to find out is, would I be comfortable seeing that I was saying, so I said, Your Excellency, it's, it's not me. with me, I'm a lawyer. Mm. I do uh, professional work. If my client comes, I do not start looking at uh, the politics. Or their affiliation. Or their affiliation. Uh, what I look at is uh, the crime they are said to have committed. Mm. And uh, if they committed it, am I able to defend them? Not the, their p political persuasion. That's got nothing at all to, <laughs> to mm. do with it. Um, and really the question... It should be the other way. Are you, Your Excellency, comfortable that me, somebody who has been associated with MMD, mm. uh, can represent you? He said, young man, young man, I've heard good things about you. <laughs> good, good. <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 so <laughs> that, that's how I came to be one of the ones representing him. Mm. Um, of course, after, um, I think, detention of over 18 months, I, I don't know whether the case was discontinued or they lost the case. Uh, what was the outcome of that case? It, there, there was no case at all. So, yeah. it, so it, it, it just floundered and it was lost because yeah. there was no case. But unfortunately, um, you had uh, uh, people who were terribly um, tortured even died and, I, and, and their health after the torture was never, never the same. same. I'm mm. talking about uh, Cuthbert uh, Nguni. Yes. Yes. He was. From MP, from Eastern Province, yeah. He was.
terribly. Was he the injured. author of the document? Yes, he, he was the author. Okay, okay. And he was terribly, brutally tortured. Mm. 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 Torture remains a criminal offense and uh, a human rights um, uh, uh, offense. Let's go back. I think when we see you is um, strongly when the nation sees you, is you emerge as one of the vice presidents to the new political party called UPND. MMD has been in power. They've won the 1996 re-election. And uh, um, they are surging and, and, and going forward to 2001, where the next election will be. Then President Mazoka forms UPND. I think it appeared to be national party. There was those small parties, national party uh, with Mr. Teta Mashimba. But then he decides to form this UPND. Are you part of the inception of the UPND or you are recruited later? No, I'm part of the inception. You can even, speak to that. Even uh, when uh, at Mulungushi, the uh, announcement of uh, the office holders was made, you find that I'm one of the ones uh, announced at that very initial uh, stage. So what drove you people to form the UPND? Um, what happened is, uh, before it was formed, uh, obviously there is, um, discussions between various people and so on. Um, and um, I had uh, uh, Gilbert Temba, David Matongo uh, approach me and sort of like sound me out on what I felt about the politics and uh, so forth. Um, and uh, we found that we're thinking the the same, uh, and that uh, we felt that there was a need to give an alternative to the Zambian uh, people. Um, that's when they said that, no, in fact, uh, 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 Anderson Mazoka had asked them to come and talk to me. Mm -hmm. yeah. The um, promoter of and initiator of the party. Yes. So, uh, so the. Uh, because I think he, he didn't want to directly come and then find out oh, maybe I say, ah, no, 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 I'm not interested. Or then I go and say, ah, there's these people who are plotting to... Mm, <laughs> to, to form a political party. Yeah, yeah so that's they're being why, careful. Yeah, that's why even in their approach, they only brought in the issue of the party. Towards the end, first of all, it was just generally talking about politics. The state of the country. The state of the country. So I think they were sort of like, Feeling me out, say, is this somebody that we can <laughs> that we can uh, trust <laughs> yeah. or not? Um, now you may ask, uh, why did Anderson Mazoka um, send them to me? Mm. Um, it's because I'd worked with uh, Anderson Mazoka before. Okay. The Post newspaper uh, was uh, formed. Uh, Anderson Mazoka, Enoch Kavindele, um, of course, Fred Membe, mm. and Masaso Piri. And, uh, yeah, there was a set of journalists and then yeah. the set of uh, businessmen that supported the venture of the Post newspaper. Yes. Mm. And, uh, what was your role in the formation of the paper? The paper was formed, just for our viewers, in 1990 uh, 91 to support the call for multi party democracy, literally. It was part of those um, activities. Um, I was the one who uh, actually had it formed, registered, and so on. Mm. Now, it was not the usual run of the mm. mill company. Yeah. Uh, like you pointed out, there was uh, the journalists, and then there were the businessmen. Mm. The journalists uh, were uh, Mike Hall, uh, John Mukela. Uh, Masao Sopiri, and Fred Membe. Mm. Um, Fred Membe at the time was a, not a journalist. He yeah. was a professional accountant. He was a professional Probably accountant. coming to support management. Yes, coming mm. to, uh, to support management. So that was the core group. That is the core group that had the idea of uh, forming the paper. And, uh, and then it uh, came to the financiers. Yes. 
and setting up a, 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 a sellable uh, product, uh, Fred Membe did that too, so that the finances would the be business shown, plan for the it. business plan for it. Fred yeah. Membe uh, did that. And then so you had a whole array of uh, businessmen who uh, were approached, well, amongst them was uh, Anderson Masoka. Who, who bought it? Who approached the businessman? Was it you or was no, no, it, no. Uh, it, it was the journalist himself? It was the journalist and Fred member themselves. Okay. I was uh, doing the legal. Mm -hmm. So one of the issues um, which was there is the journalist was saying, uh, and Fred was saying, we don't have the money. Yeah. yeah. Now these guys can come in and then. Uh, they can control us and our editorial outlook. Yes. Um, so I told them that, well, what we'll have to do is we'll have to have uh, different uh, categories of shares. And your shares will, will be special shares, which will ensure that you, in spite of uh, these businessmen owning uh, large amounts of uh, shares, they cannot uh, control the editorial content and so on. So we crafted up the memorandum. Um, and articles of association of the company in that way. Ah, okay. So that okay. they were, the, 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 the four uh, founders, founders were, were protected. Okay, yeah. okay. So getting back to uh, Anderson, um, the first um, uh, uh, chairman of the board was Anderson Mazoka. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was on the board as secretary okay. of the board. Mm -hmm. So uh, during the time Anderson Mazoka was uh, chair of the board, you, you, as chair of the board, you have to work a lot with your secretary. <laughs> with <the> secretary. <laughs> oh, so that's your initial interaction with him. That, so that was my initial interaction uh, with him. And we, we got along very, very, very well. Um, and I think it's, not I think, definitely, it's because of that that he, he thought of me and sent those people to say, no, I know this, this guy. Yeah. Can you go and find out whether he would be interested <clears throat> mm -hmm. to, to join? So that's how um, I, he sent them. Mm -hmm. UPND, <clears throat> the, the, the events ran quickly, 2000, going to 2001, this turmoil in the MMG because, uh, you know, the president, Dr. Frederick Chiluwa, has decided, apparently, to go for a third term. And there is an internal revolt led by his vice presidents of the country and uh, of the party at the time, I think, General Meander and Christian Tembo and 22 other MPs. They go to conference. They are excluded. Most of those people are excluded, and then they form political parties. FDD, led by General Christian Tembo and other MPs and ministers, and Heritage Party, headed by General Godfrey Meander. And in the eyes of the pundits, the horse will be a three-horse race between Frederick Chiluba's candidate, who's Levi Mwanawasa, and General Meander and Christian Tembo. No one saw the UPND and Anderson Mazoka. They were formed in 1998. Even when you look at the literature, they are literally ignored. How did you people manage to emerge literally nearly winning that election in 2001? If you look at the press, and for all of us that <clears throat> lived in the era, you would think that the winner will come from either FDD, Christian Tembo, Heritage Party, General Meander, or Levi Mwanawasa. Mazoka, yeah, he was a dark horse. No one saw him. He may just speak to that. Okay. I'll get to that. <clears throat> you talked about the third term and yeah. the machinations to get the third term. It just so happens that um, at the height of that debate, yeah. um, I was um, the chairman of the Law Association of, of Zambia at the time. Um, so you were president the, of Lars. Uh, at that time, it was called, called chairperson. Chair yes, yeah, it was mm. called the chairperson. It's only recently that we've uh, moved from 
calling it chairperson to president. And Lars, during that time, was very critical in the fight against the third term. Yes, um, that was the point I wanted to make. So it was very, very critical. Um, so uh, quite a number of people, and perhaps uh, even when we, I was talking about Anderson Mazoka, perhaps even that caught his eye at mm -hmm. home. <laughs> That's what uh, Squatter is, is doing. Um, so we played a very big uh, role. Um, there is even a time when uh, uh, we managed to get the parties, all the parties to agree. That is the General Meanders, the Christian Tembos, um, all the parties, including President Chiluba, to come and meet under the auspices of uh, Lars at Mulungushi International Conference Center. The, the tension was very high at the time. Uh, yes. Yeah, the, the political tension was extremely high. Because here are people who are inside us who are now polarized and they form their political parties. And we are going to the general election, and there was a lot of tension. Mm -hmm. So that meeting at Mungushu was convened by you. Yes, and I, and I chaired it. Um, Dr. Kaunda was there and so on. At the last minute, uh, Dr. Chiluba decided he was not going to attend the, the, the meeting. meeting. But the others agreed that we still go ahead and discuss the whole issue. So I, I chaired <laughs> all the presidents mm -hmm. uh, at Murungushi. I'm the one who chaired What were their them. concerns at the time? Um, the same things of uh, the, the Constitution, uh, issues of uh, the, the right to uh, hold rallies, access to uh, state media, a whole host of, uh, mm. of things, mm. yeah. political tensions and, and violence, all of those uh, were, were of concern. So now, coming to the issue of uh, the, the election, um, I think that the Zambian people had decided that they, they, they wanted uh, to have um, a strong uh, opposition, possibly even a new government, mm -hmm. and that if this uh, opposition was not going to form the new government, it must be strong and credible. Um, you had FDD with lots of heavyweights. I mean, um, uh, all of them basically at the top there were former ministers and so on who had shown their love for the country by resigning their... Their seats, their, their, their positions. Their positions. Um, they must be commended for that, all of those who did that. And it, it's something so rare yeah. in Zambian politics, so rare. But it's something that people who uh, genuinely have the heart of the people should do it. If, they, if, if you find that the right thing is not being done, the best thing is that you should resign if you cannot uh, make your colleagues see the, the right thing. So uh, there is that high standard that Zambians must go to. Mm. Now, uh, FDD, because of that, got a lot of attention. Unfortunately, um, that grouping had sort of like uh, split up. You had uh, General Meander uh, forming a heritage uh, party. Um, you had other uh, smaller parties as well being uh, formed. And I think that that made the, the electorate a little bit uncomfortable that these people whom we want, they're, they're not staying together. In fact, the, the 2001 elections forms the basis for, for the need to have an alliance. Because here is a president, that 29%, and the combined vote of the opposition is at 71%. Yet the 71% are not in government. The guy that wins with 29% becomes president. If the opposition... Uh, worked together, because together FDD, Heritage, and UPND scored 71%. True. Um, and so one would have expected that FDD would be the one that would, um, would, 
carry the day. But then you had this fresh thing, yeah. which was there. The fresh thing being uh, UPND. UPND. And um, <clears throat> if you looked at the UPND that was formed, and you lined up the people uh, in that original UPND, as you went down the line, you'd be nodding, saying, oh, yeah, I can see that person being a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one speaks sense. It was a very nice array of people. It was also very, very representative of the country, truly representative of all corners of the, of the country. The other thing that we then did is we said, well, um, people, yes, know a lot of these things that uh, are going wrong. So you had FDD hammering on that. They said, let, let, let us try to have something different. Yeah. So we then decided that it's very important that we present alternatives to the Zambian people. The Zambian people, if they're out, they will listen. And as they tend to listen, their eyes will go off FDD. Mm -hmm. <laughs> their eyes will... So you, you, your politics was different. <coughs> It was you, you just didn't want to attack the government, but you decided to provide alternative policies. Yes. One of the major alternative policies we provided um, you was proposed. that we proposed um, was that of uh, free education. In and 2001? Yes, yes, yes. Wow. Uh, you'll find it in the manifesto which was drawn up. The manifesto was uh, quite uh, revolutionary. <clears throat> And so they started attacking us, saying, ah, how will you afford to, <laughs> how much will this cost, and so mm. on. So we had our, uh, our uh, researchers and everything who then put out, this is how much it would cost, and then said that there are these areas of wastage in, in, government. in government, in the government, where this could move to there. Also... There's these additional things that can be done to raise money. Mm. So the, the question that they were raising was then... Answered. Answered and became very different. So, so they said that, no, we'll be able to, to do this. But we also yeah. need to understand uh, the environment at the time in 2001, between 1991 to 2001. Uh, after Dr. Kaunda... You know, there was that mantra, Vamahala Vinasila. Because under Dr. Kaunda, everything was free. Free education, free health facilities, free, 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 everything. And when the MMD came, their language was, it's not possible. The resources are limited. You cannot have. In fact, they introduced user fees in education. They introduced user fees at hospitals. So for the first time, Zambians were paying. Zambians had actually bought the the argument that things can't be free. So when you are proposing free education in 2001, they say, mm, this unique thing, can it work? So you are right. Uh, you had to get professionals to assess how it can be done. Yes. And uh, we had gotten them to assess even before we had said it, because it's very important that when you do give um, a promise to the people, that you know it's doable, yeah. that you do have a plan as to how you do it, Otherwise, you end up just giving false promises to the people. Mm. And then when you come in, you find that you're not delivering on the promises that uh, you made. That is the worst thing anybody can do. So we ensured that any policy we were putting forward, we had um, the answers as to how we would actually achieve do it. it. Yeah. The other thing that we did, which nobody else did, um, is... Um, we had the manifesto, and we said to ourselves, this manifesto, if you go and give it to my uncle there in Shangombo, he will, he will not understand, understand it. <laughs> he will mm. not understand it, and so forth. So I then said, why don't we uh, translate it into all the seven major languages? 
And I made a mistake by doing that. The, the, the mistake is that uh, they all said, yes, a good idea. Since you thought about it, you do it. <laughs> <laughs> so you had to arrange the linguistic experts to change it into... So I had to arrange mm. the linguistic experts to, to do that. And we did all seven. Okay. okay. All seven of the, 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 the major languages. Mm. And um, it, it was quite a changer in that... You'd go to um, a rural area, explain, 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 and then uh, you tell them that uh, these things we want to do, uh, like if I'm in Barotsiland, uh, I'll say, yes. saying that these things that um, we say we'll do for you, for you to be able to understand further and all. We've re put them into this document. Into this document. And there is a copy. Language. And I'll leave you with the And you'd find the, uh, the real mm. excitement of people uh, looking at it. And then uh, I remember what I would used to do, and I'm sure it was happening with my colleagues in other areas as well, is um, you then say, um, who will be able to read this for... Uh, for the for the others, so you look at the younger people, and all of them say, say "No, I'm sky across God. No, I haven't been to school or not." And then there'll be like, an old man on his walking stick. I mean, leaning on his walking stick uh, yeah. there. And then when you ask, says, "Ah, I'll, I'll I'll read it for them." <laughs> wow. You know. Wow, that also so, speaks to the standards of education. Of education that, that our pe old people are even more educated than our the, young the generation. Young, yeah. And, you know, in spite of that, at the next village, when you'd go there, you'd again be looking at the young ones, and the same thing happened. So after the third, fourth, that's when you'd realize that, no, let me look towards the older ones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they are the ones that are educated and can But read. like you say, that just shows uh, the level the falling of, standards. of uh, falling standards which were, which were there. So by doing that, it meant that uh, people had something... To, to read. Um, and hold you accountable for. Yes. But it's literally a social contract. Uh, but what it did is that um, if they are sitting as a group and this uh, old man is reading to them, the debate would then be about uh, these things. These things that they've written that make sense or whatever. So then the eye goes away from FDD mm. or... <laughs> or mm. anywhere else. So, mm. the, so there was that. And ah, the strategy was a masterpiece. Yeah. In taking politics to, um, I think, to debate than just distribution of Vitenges. Yes. Mm. So it was that kind of thing, which... Um, and, of course, uh, there was the blitz we did uh, two days before, before the election. Uh, if you remember, two days, two or three days before the election, uh, we had ordered all these stickers, bumper stickers, and so on. And then uh, three nights before, three or so nights before, we had troops of youths who went, Carroll Road, every single shop got that sticker, mm -hmm. which was put on. We, we did something which um, I'm not proud to, to say mm -hmm. without asking permission. From the council. Even on people's cars, the youths went in on the bumpers, they would put them. Mm -hmm. And when people woke up the following day, the whole town mm -hmm. just had those. <laughs> yeah, you'd be a colors and yeah, yeah. And so the bus was, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And because it was just overnight, bang, mm -hmm. the city mm -hmm. has uh, changed. That also uh, helped to... The last push. <laughs> the last push. Yeah, 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 yeah. We come to 2006. I just wanted to clarify something. When you PND was formed, did, were you vice president or did you become vice president after 2001? No, when you PND was formed, I was legal chair. Okay, you were chairperson the, of legal. I was chairperson of legal. Um, they had two positions for uh, vice president. 
they had Vice President Administration and uh, Vice President Political. And uh, Dr. Mulirua was the only one who was Vice President. The other one was vacant. Okay. I think uh, there was somebody they were thinking of. Eventually that person didn't come. Um, after a few months, uh, four or five months or something like that, um, the rest of my colleagues uh, felt that, no, 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 the person who should take up that uh, position is uh, Saki. Um, so uh, I was then promoted to, to that position. Mm. Another thing we need to mention is that during that election, you went to stand in Livingstone and came to Parliament, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk to 2006. It's very exciting for you, but it's also sad for you because you lose your mentor, your colleague, President Anderson Mazoka. You are left with this party, you and your colleagues, and you have to conduct succession. It's also sad because then it forces you to leave the UPND. Let's just dwell on that. Um, that was a very difficult uh, time for me um, in uh, losing uh, uh, Anderson uh, Mazoka um, because uh, uh, we had actually become really extremely close, yeah. extremely close uh, with him. Um, and uh, the confidence we had in each other was extremely high. Uh, that uh, quite a number of times um, there would only certain uh, things would be discussed only between the the, the two of us. Um, so it was a big loss to me from a personal point of view. Also from the party point of view, it was a big loss. What made it that uh, period even worse uh, for me? Uh, is that a few days later, after Anderson Mazoka's death, um, I lost my own mother. Oh, yeah. shame. I lost oh, uh, shame. just a few days. So there was so double two tragedy. major um, um, uh, issues that I, uh, tragedies that I was uh, dealing with. And um, the, the atmosphere... Uh, at Malende and so on was something that I was not proud of as UPND. Um, you Malende, had, for our viewers, was a residence of Anderson Mazoka. Yes. Mm. Um, you had people genuinely wanting to come to, uh, to mourn uh, with us, uh, some from the government. In particular, what happened to Venon Mwanga is very sad. He still has um, those hearing problems because of the beating, the actual physical beating that he, he got merely for coming to come and uh, pass. He, I think at the time he was a chief government spokesperson. Yes. He was Minister of Information and if a man of the stature of Anderson Mazoka dies, he's obliged to come to, other than their personal relations. But yeah. he was badly beaten, and like you have said, he has never recovered. I think it's a right or I can't remember whether it's left ear. He's never recovered from those beatings. Yeah. What yeah. caused that? Why was there? You were vice president of the party. Um, what what, what uh, happened is you had a certain grouping of people who for some reason felt that they needed to get violent. Um, it is not violence only against even people like VJ who are coming from outside the party, but even people within the party. Robert Stinger was harassed. Another vice president. Another vice president. I was Harassed, vice president of the vice party. president of the party, and uh, uh, sadly, uh, some of the people who even uh, now have been given uh, jobs and uh, uh, and so on were amongst the ones in the forefront of the 
the violence. They are, they, it, it's, it's sad. They were openly uh, being tribal. It's very sad, very sad. It's, it's not something that I... That, 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 that I talk about, but it's, it's sad, and it's a The fact. succession, immediately, I think, when the president was unwell and was going through that difficult situation, an issue arose of succession, and it appeared it would be between you and Bob Schinger, but apparently there were other plans, and like you are saying, the tribal elements manifested in a very negative way. And many Zambians will remember it has never, the, the UPND has never healed from that episode. No, it was, um, you, at that time, uh, we had uh, formed UDA uh, before uh, President Mazoka died. Um, and uh, UDA was uh, FDD, UNIP, and uh, UPND. And the way things were looking, I am very, very sure and certain Uda would have won, won that election. Won that election. There's no doubt about it. Everybody was behind Uda. What then spoiled Uda's chances is the, the happenings in UPND. There's no doubt about it. Nobody mm. can deny that 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 is what caused Yuda not to succeed in that election, an election which was definitely going to be won. Mm -hmm. You have a convention after the burial, uh, the uh, rights and, you know, the president has been put to rest. You now need to do, to find a leader. I think things get uglier and uglier. Uh, just speak to that election and then how you finally left the UPND. Um, that same violence that was seen at, uh, during the funeral at Malende carried on. Mm. It, it did not stop. It spilled into even the convention. Uh, those uh, uh, chantings and so on of uh, it must be a uh, someone from this tribe, mm -hmm. carried on throughout. Even those who were uh, from that tribe who should have said, no, this is not right, were not saying so. There were some who uh, were saying so, and one must uh, acknowledge uh, that they were doing the right uh, thing. You had, for example, Honorable Ompi Kumbula. She stated that, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. This election should not be that. It must be uh, this way. You had people like David Matongo. Uh, you had people like uh, Emmanuel Hachipuka. Um, you, you had various uh, people. So there from, were other from, rational voices. There were many, many rational mm -hmm. ones. Mm -hmm. But the violent The ones, mob. <laughs> the mob. <Yeah. laughs> there, there were many, many, many. There, there are many rational ones. Many, but then the mob to hold. And those who were rational, it seems as if uh, somebody said, fine, since you did that, you're not going to stand. Mm. All of them were not adopted. Oh, my. All of them Their were not adopted. Their career ended, literally. Yes. Not because they were not popular. In fact, they were very, those who were reasonable were very popular in their, in their constituencies. In their constituencies. And they had been peers to Mazoka, by the way. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they were put aside for being reasonable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. um, it's unfortunate. So that also uh, contributed to uh, the waning of, uh, of things. Um, I stood in the election, uh, not at uh, presidential uh, level, uh, but at uh, uh, constituency level. Also, you decide to leave the UPND. You form another political party. Actually, it's a very interesting yes, uh, story yes. as to how UOP was uh, was formed. Um, the, the, it, it was 
read a very uh, uh, confused um, uh, state of affairs at the convention. Very confused, very volatile, uh, where to trying to put down fires uh, and so on, one could not sleep. Mm. I hadn't slept for about 48 hours. Mm. Uh, people thought on the day of the election that I wouldn't even go there. Reason being that um, people dressed in uh, traditional attire with spears filled up them with actual spears. <laughs> Threatening, that was very threatening. Yes. Um, but uh, that stubbornness that I talked about earlier, which I got from my dad, people were saying, no, no, it's not safe, don't go there, and, and so on, and there was all this chanting. The, the tables were right at the front, and you enter uh, from the other end there, and you have to, and you have to do that walk. So... I just had two bodyguards. There were some more who uh, were outside, but I said, no, we don't go in as a, as a mob. The one who actually even drove me there is uh, Cornelius Mueto. <laughs> Cornelius? <laughs> Cornelius. <laughs> he was a student at the university at the time. Yeah, Cornelius Mueto actually mm. drove, me, mm. drove me there. But he, he, he's not one of the ones who came in. And you could see he was really shaken by, yeah. <laughs> by, the, what sight. The, by the sight. He was of clearly the, very those shaken. Those warriors with <laughs> traditional spears, <Yeah. laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, so I then enter. And nobody could believe that I could come. come. Actually come. All that noise which was in there just went quiet. And everybody was just looking at me. Just walked up to uh, where the, the, the thing, the voting was uh, happening. Took my uh, ballot. My ballot. Cast filled it out. Cast in for the, because it wasn't just for the presidential. Cast in there for the various whatever, including the presidential, and walked out. The amazing thing, like I said, is that noisy place became quiet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I left. And I'm told that after I left, that's when the <laughs> noise... <laughs> like, what has happened? <laughs> what is, everybody was, what? He came here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so so, so that, that, that is... I think uh, there was great disappointment in President Daka in the Hlema. At the time, even when you are competing, you are an aspirant, People thought he would put, he would condemn the violence and he would condemn the tribal talk. Mm -hmm. That's what By his silence, he seemed complicit. Mm -hmm. In fact, he appeared to have engineered it. Yeah. Or by his silence, he seemed complicit. Well, he's never explained why he was silent. I hope he comes here and then yeah. he can explain. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, you had asked me as to how ULP was, was formed. Was, was formed. So there was all that that was happening. When I left uh, there, like I said, I was exhausted, exhausted. Went back home um, to clean up and, and rest. Um, I was asleep. I must have slept for about 16 hours or something like that because I was that tired, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. And then I was being woken up, told that people to see, people to see me. And yes, uh, outside. Um, so I went out in my dressing gown, and I find there's about 30, 40 uh, people. Uh, they were being led by uh, uh, Honorable Henry Mutonga, Mm. Um, the Kanyama MP. The Kanyama MP. Mm. He's the one who was the uh, chairman of uh, UPND. There was him. There was uh, Honorable Inonge Wina. Um, there, there was uh, Batuke Imenda, the, mm. <laughs> the patriotic, mm. uh, the 
UPND. The current Secretary General the of the current party. Secretary, mm. uh, there was Imenda. There were several others, and then also provincial, number of provincial heads. Uh, most of the provincial heads, about six of them, uh, five or six of, of them, the provincial heads of, of the UPND. And I looked at them and I said, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> so they said, we've come to collect you. They collect me. He says, yes. Uh, as we're just uh, the, uh, the ones sent to collect you, they're waiting for you at Zanimone. Uh, Zanimone was one of the places where the delegates were being kept. It was, in fact, the major, the major place where the delegates were, were sleeping. I said, they said, yes, let's go and change. Come. I said, okay, give me time to <laughs> wash up and breakfast. I said, yes, we'll wait, but you have to come. Went in, had a very quick uh, uh, meal. It wasn't actually breakfast. For me, it was breakfast because I just woke up. Yeah, <laughs> <But it> was, <laughs> after three days. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so I then went and I said, but, but, what's going on? They were just saying, no, 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 you, they, they will, they will, you'll be addressed when we go there. So I get to Zanimone. It was this large, large group, hundreds of uh, members, hundreds. They are all seated there. But all of them are in civilian mm -hmm. gear. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they are not wearing uh, party, party, actually, regalia. party regalia. They are all in civilian uh, gear. And then I look, and there's a big heap of uh, party regalia. Regalia, a very big heap. I said, so what's going on here? <laughs> 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 so they told me, you know, sit down. They had a, a seat there, and then uh, two or three other seats. So you had people like uh, uh, Henry Mutonga. Henry Mutonga, in fact, was the one who was uh, more or less... Like the convener. Like the, the, like the convener. Um, so he says, uh, we've called you here to listen to us. So then he calls upon various people to narrate what had happened to them, how they felt about uh, the whole convention and so on. Clearly, they were not happy. Mm -hmm. um, then you even had um, Mrs. Kalembula, who was one of the officials and the chairperson, um, uh, uh, Mrs. Katilongo, who had been severely, severely beaten, mm, mm. even an arm broken. Mm. That's how bad it was. It, it wasn't just a thing of four oh, people being shoved at, you know, yeah. it was actual physical, harmful mm. uh, violence, people breaking limbs and so on. Mm. Nobody can deny that. Yeah, <laughs> they are, yeah, yeah. Medical. And they talked about, uh, she was in a, a sling. P.O.P. and sling, yeah. yeah. Mm. And uh, it brought everybody to, to tears, tears, actually, mm. when uh, that was her. She symbolized <clears throat> what went wrong with that conference. Yes. Mm. Mm. Um, that's when... Uh, uh, over again. He said, so we've called you here not to ask you what we should do. We've decided all of us that we are leaving mm -hmm. the UPND. Mm -hmm. And we've also uh, decided that upon leaving a party must be formed, mm -hmm. a new party. The only thing we want to ask you, because these are the things we've decided. <laughs> the only thing we want to ask you is, do you agree to be the leader of the new party that we're mm. going to form? Mm. I've uh, never felt uh, that kind of emotion where you feel, these people yeah. are, are here and this is what they decided about me, this is what they, it, it really, um, and 
I, I couldn't say no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can't. Yeah. People yeah. who have gone to that, I, I couldn't say no, no, I'm not going to be um, the, 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 the DW thing. After hearing the, the, the emotions of the people who had gone through all, all those things, um, and that's when that heap of regalia was set on. <laughs> A bonfire. <laughs> a bonfire was set on. <laughs> to say bye to you, PND. <laughs> yes. So I didn't form ULP. ULP. And that's a cardinal point. People yeah. thought you formed ULP. I did not. I didn't even know they were meeting and, mm. and uh, <clears throat> making that decision. I had mm. absolutely no idea. I was just dragged from home. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know? Yeah. And, uh, anyway, events emerge. I think you leave. Uda, of course, has been now... Uh, President Haka Inde Echilema runs, the new leader of UPND runs with Uda, with Idris Nawakwe and Tidienji. You go into an alliance with, um, with uh, the Patriotic Front, um, uh, Michael Sata. Some of your MPs that were MPs under UPND actually, uh, like given the uh, stand. There's some decisions that were made. Some of your candidates stand on the PF and some stand on the ULP. I think uh, you emerged with um, three MPs yourself. You won in Livingstone. I think Woy Nonge, Nalolo, I can't remember the third one. No, no, no. She didn't win, actually. Uh -huh. um, the, we won the two Lukulu seats. Oh, Lukulu East and West. Yes. The one that is... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And you, Livingstone. Yes. And then you had candidates. Who were your members, like given Luwinda? And oh, others, Alfreda Kansembe in Lukasha in Kasama, then stand on the PF because the PF was seen to be strong in those areas. Um, before I get to that, yeah. uh, you talked of uh, UDA. Uh, the original idea that we agreed upon. As How was UDA European, formed? UDA was uh, formed by the three parties that is, FDD, UNIP, and UPND. Um, it was formed with the realization that um, if we're going to be splitting votes... Like the 2001 scenario. Like the 2001 scenario, one scenario uh, then the opposition was not going to, to win. And uh, also the people generally had been saying, you, opposition, you're letting us down. Work together. We want to support you, but work together. Um, and we heard the cries of the... So we started uh, uh, working towards how we're going to even have candidates, how the choosing of candidates um, in terms of the parliamentary and local government seats would be done. We were forming joint uh, committees of the three parties. Um, so uh, two vice presidents, uh, that is, uh, Vice President uh, Chifumu Banda and Vice President Swata were tasked with uh, doing the constitution of uh, UDA, of doing the memorandum of understanding of uh, UDA, uh, which we, we did, and uh, we had it uh, registered. Uh, one of the things in the UDA memorandum of understanding and the constitution was that um, other parties, so long as they came and showed that uh, they agreed to the principles of the Constitution and the Memorandum of Understanding, and also their party had passed a resolution to join, were free to join. Mm. Mm. ULP and that uh, uh, then the existing ones uh, would... Uh, then accept them to come in. So ULP formally uh, applied. Applied, because we we had met and we said no, we, we, we still want to be part of UDA. Um, Tidienji Kaunda, Edith Nawakwi were very happy. Said, good. Now we're not going to have a split in the country because of ULP having been formed. Let's call them in. But then somebody decided to have a veto. 
Mm-hmm. Of course, President Daga in the is a new president of UPND. You've just had uh, a heavily contested election, and uh, probably there was no healing. And I think then he offered the veto against ULP uh, uh, being part of um, uh, the party. So this the is other, now. The other two were very, very supportive and excited. Mm. And they, they, are looking, they looked at it as being. Because they were worried with what had happened in UPND. Yeah. Now, with ULP coming in, they were thinking that, whoa. That who cement. Who cement. And yeah. the, that uh, loss of. Members. Members and so on will not affect us. We'll still go through. And uh, unfortunately, there was the veto. And so the things that... Uh, On record, President Naga Indechilema vetoed your membership to... Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it must so be made very clear. So then um, it was uh, felt that being a new party, European, it, it would uh, be rather ambitious to then stand for presidential. Mm. Um, that uh, maybe it's best that we link up with somebody. Um, quite uh, coincidentally, after UOP had been formed, got visitations from um, Michael Sata and his uh, party, also got visitations from President Mwanawasa. Ah, okay, <laughs> yes. They both wanted you. They both, <laughs> they both wanted you. Both of them. Um, but what so, made you go not to Mwanawasa but to Sata? No, it was felt that um, we already had uh, so many things we're saying were going wrong with uh, Mwanawasa's uh, MMD that uh, it wouldn't look uh, proper or right. People would say, but just three days ago, four days ago, you were saying this about <laughs> <laughs> this person. Now you're, you're with them. So then the, the option became um, uh, SATA and PM. Quite coincidentally, after the elections, mm. um, about two years into um, President Monawasa's second term, uh, we started having a very good uh, relationship and interaction. Um, uh, uh, former uh, First Lady um, uh, uh, Maureen Mwanawasa would be able to vouch mm, that mm. on a number of times I would actually be called by President Mwanawasa and I would attend at, uh, at, at State House. Probably your area thinks as lawyers uh, okay, kicked in all, more. Yeah. All, also that, no, yeah. but it, it wasn't just that. It was um, it, it was actually we started understanding each other better and agreeing on a number of things. And um, President Monawasa was the kind of person who uh, liked to listen. Mm. He actually mm. liked to listen. So he would come and you say, "Is this this? What do you think?" I mean, he wouldn't necessarily agree with you, but he, he wanted to, to, listen. to listen and to hear. So he, he called me on a number of, of issues. And, mm. uh, and thing. But going back to <laughs> thing, that was an aside. Sorry for mm. that. No, that's for okay. The, for the aside. Mm. So that's how we ended up with, uh, with the PF. Now, during the, uh, the, the, the the, the planning as to how to go ahead. Uh, President Sata said, um, these elections are going to be tight. Um, this formation we've made together, a lot of people may not uh, understand it and we may not have enough time to tell people mm. about it. Um, and in some critical areas, if you don't have a suit, yeah. meaning that uh, the president, the uh, MP, MP and councillor are all on the same uh, ticket, people will get confused. Mm. Yeah. And so places like Lusaka are very, very 
important, copper belt, very important. So in those areas, uh, even if it's your people who, who stand, let's have them stand on PF. Mm. That's how you got people like uh, uh, Given Rubinda and people like uh, Henry Mutonga, Afrika Kanzete, standing. PF areas. P PF areas, but they were actually... Your members. Our members. That was a magnanimous decision because that's also detrimental to your party because uh, the new um, MPs, if someone doesn't know your story, who will regard them as PF? They're not even, they may not even remember the history. In fact... That even strong, strong, you know, candidates like both Lubinda and Henry Mutonga, people remember them as, as PF. Not the way, the way you help me, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so it was then, very magnanimous of you as a leader. Mm. And then what happened is uh, uh, late uh, Honorable Benite Tamashimba, remember him? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, a, a very naughty, naughtily, he raises a point of order yeah. in uh, Parliament. Because even though they were uh, there as PF, uh, like uh, Henry Mutonga was vice president, UOP. <laughs> yeah. Uh, given was publicity, UOP. Mm. So Henry Mutong, uh, Mutonga and given. So uh, Teta Mashimba raises this point of order. Say, uh, these, these two, it means they've crossed the floor because they're appearing as being um, uh, such and such in UOP. Is it in order? for them to still keep their seats. Yeah. So the uh, clerk of the National Assembly was asked to write to us formally mm. to state, are these your... Members or not? Members or not. Oh, my. We sat down and said, do we want to have by-elections in this? Or do we simply write back saying, these are not our members. So that we save the country the need for uh, a by election. And also, by elections, the ruling party always puts in. As an advantage, they put in a lot of resources. Put in a lot of resources. Um, so we wrote to the clerk of the National Assembly. Disowning your members. Disowning <laughs> our members. <laughs> yeah, for uh, a larger good. Yeah. No, again, again, that's a hallmark of leadership. Because you could have stated the truth that these are, these are UOP members, but they are uh, uh, members of now PF. But also that speaks to the inadequacies in our laws that don't, may not necessarily recognize alliances. Before I let you go, uh, we have a tradition here. We want you, as our guest, to give us a peak view. What has been done right in our country? What has been done wrongly? Um, you answer that question through the review of our leaders. Let's start with our founder president, uh, you know, statesman, Dr. Kenneth Kaunda. What do you think is a hallmark there? What did you do well? What did you do right? And where, where could have been the weaknesses? Uh, well, with Dr. Kaunda, there's lots of things that he did right, especially in the early part of his uh, tenure. Um, Free education. I'm a product of <laughs> free education. Of uh, free education. Um, there's so many uh, of uh, almost everybody in our generation is a product of their free education. And not only was it free, it was actually quality uh, education. The quality part was never lost. The quality part. So was it was free and quality education. Exactly. Because uh, it's important, the reason you want the free education is to build up the capacity of the people and your nation. If it is not quality, even if it's free, it will not build up mm -hmm. the thing. The free education must be there. It must be there. And uh, there's nobody who disputes that. Nobody disputes that free education must be there. But we have to make sure that it is quality education. And Kaunda managed to do the two, free and quality, quality. Yeah. education. Yeah. What could have been his weaknesses? 
His weakness is, is that after some time, uh, he began to, to think that uh, he knew more than uh, others, um, that he was a fountain of wisdom. Uh, hence why quite often he would go, stupid idiot, stupid idiot. <laughs> <laughs> he became derogatory even to his own, uh, you know, to his own citizens and to journalists. Yes. Mm. Um, that was because of that feeling that I, I know it all. Mm. And that was unfortunately built into him. In the beginning, he wasn't like that. Yeah. But the people around him, uh, with all those slogans about uh, Kumulu. Mm. Mm. Kumulu lesa punch ka, kaunda. Yeah, those kind mm. of things of making. Keke wamu ya, ya, ya. Yeah, MS, your Nike mm. uh, figure is. Um, it's something that even now we see creeping back. Mm. Mm. Uh, mm. That people are trying to make it seem like there's some superhuman being yeah. who knows everything. Yeah. So if one is not um, careful, you yourself start believing, yes. Yeah, you believe the praises. You believe the praises, mm, <laughs> you mm, know, mm. and think that... Uh, he clearly did, because he was beginning to call people idiots, because he thought we were idiots. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that is what uh, his failing was. But um, as in terms of uh, wishing the best for the country, I think he did wish the best for the country especially on the issues of unity and peace. Yeah. Mm. Dr. Kaunda, Dr. Frederick Chiluba, who then succeeds Dr. Kaunda? Uh, Dr. Frederick Chiluba is the liberalization of the economy. He did that uh, very well. Um, and also uh, encouraging uh, uh, people who had uh, knowledge in various fields to become part of government. Uh, and uh, if you look at the first uh, um, cabinet of uh, Dr. Chiruba, very, very good. You look at the last one <laughs> and compare, <laughs> yeah. I think that a number of people will not even be able to, to name who in that, that very last cabinet, you yeah. remember that he formed after mm. the, the, the 22 Left. After the third term, debate collapsed and yes. they said he wasn't going for it and formed a new cabinet. Mm. That one was a pitiful, <laughs> mm. pitiful cabinet. And apart from that, the third term thing is uh, what was it? Hurt his legacy. Yeah. yeah. That is what hurt his President legacy. Levy Monawasa. Uh, President Levy Monawasa is a, a, a very interesting uh, a person. Um, Short temper, short temper like uh, like K, okay. but very quick to calm down. <laughs> ah, okay. Mm. Very very quick to calm down, and uh, in fact, uh, after reflection, even call the person he was annoyed with. Ah, okay. And <laughs> say mm. that point you were raising. <laughs> <laughs> what was the point again? <laughs> what was the point again? <laughs> so very willing to. To listen, mm. and uh, if he feels that uh, he did wrong, not afraid to then uh, change his his stance. Mm. Mm. Weaknesses, um, weaknesses uh, were that um, the same short temper uh, scared a lot of the people within. Mm. Those who didn't know that well, the short temper may be there. It was really short. It was really <laughs> short. <laughs> so you found that some people were too afraid to, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. to, to talk to him. Mm. Um, so he lost out on uh, some uh, advice that he could have gotten, which would have helped to. Uh, to but overall, he, he did very, very well. Mm. And uh, when one talks about uh, weakness, it's relative. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. It wasn't a very, very, very huge, devastating weakness, but it was a weakness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Rupia Banda. Um, Rupia Banda 
uh, one of the nicest presidents we've uh, had. Yes, everyone seems to <laughs> say that. <laughs> Definitely one of the nicest presidents we've had. Um, I remember one day, I just so happened to to be in his company when he was about to leave for 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 for, for somewhere for some campaign, and then there was a gentleman who had just been uh, convicted of defamation of the president mm, and mm. given something like two or three years, I forget uh, how much. And when he saw that, you could see the hurt on his face. He said, what? He's been given two years for just simply insulting me. <laughs> 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 no, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So he then um, uh, turned to um, uh, uh, Dixon Jerry and also to his legal thing, uh, uh, and said, no, no, that person, how can we get him to be released? Yeah. And so on. So then uh, the mercy thing was... Uh, the pardon. The pardon yeah, was... To be exercised. Was mm. exercised. <clears throat> but he was so annoyed that how can you be uh, thing for just talking, be locking up people for just uh, talking? And then he actually thereafter made a pronouncement that I do not want anybody to be arrested because they've insulted the they've president. Insulted me. Ah, so there was some form of moratorium on criminal defamation of yes. the president during his presidency. Yes. Oh, yeah. oh, nice. That shows again the love he had for humanity. Um, it also shows the self-confidence he had in himself. Mm, mm. If you're self-confident, you don't mind if some person out there is uh, saying... Insults you. Insulting. It doesn't change who you are. It doesn't change who you are. <laughs> you, know, you are who you are. It showed that, uh, that, that confidence. Yeah. Um, the, the, the problem that uh, he had is uh, he thought people had the same good nature mm. as, mm. The, as, as he was. As he was, you know. So he, he would not very aggressively uh, go out and uh, debunk things that were said about him. And so you got uh, some people who then started... Uh, a, 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 a sort of like putting together people's minds to think uh, he was corrupt, his family mm. was corrupt, mm. and, and so on. I've always and, said Rupia Banda is a president who lost when everything was okay. He had a good economy going on for him, foreign reserves, stable prices, inflation rate had even come to a single digit. But he lost the election. So you're right, the, the, the narrative stuck. And the other factors, such as MMD had been in office for 20 years, although he's new, people don't see him that he's a new president. They clothe him with um, MMD. Michael Sata, who in the area narration you told us actually came to your house in 1991. What's your <laughs> view of him um, as president? My view of him as president is, He's somebody uh, who uh, was willing to make decisions quickly, to make decisions quickly. But at the same time, that was part of his problem. Sometimes he made decisions too quickly, yeah. <laughs> you know, from, without having them uh, properly thought out. One example I could give is uh, that of Lap Green, mm. you know, and the the taking over of uh, Lap Green in spite of... Zamtel, the Zamtel. We had sold it to a Libyan company called Lap Green. Yes. Mm. And he announced uh, his cancellation. Mm. Yeah. And right now we've got a big bill <laughs> mm. because, mm. Of, uh, because of that. Um, but it, it made it that he's somebody who, uh, if, he, if he thought of something... He would execute it very quickly. Yeah, yeah. That was yeah. He appointed a permanent secretary who was there for one day. 
Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, before you even get fresh with the appointment, there was a, a, a revocation of the, 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 of the appointment. So you are right. He was quick to make decisions, but again, that became his Achilles heel. Edgar Lungu. Um, Edgar Lungu is uh, somebody who um, uh, wanted to make agriculture the mainstay. Um, and actually was succeeding in that. He was doing very well in terms of uh, agriculture. Uh, he also did quite well in terms of carrying on um, in terms of the various uh, capital projects that PF was doing the roads. There was a lot of of development in, in that sense. Uh, weaknesses. Um, one of the weaknesses, I think, uh, is that at times uh, he would not be guarded in the way he talked. <laughs> not that you'd say the wrong thing, but just simply the way he talked left it open to people who are mischievous to exploit. To exploit. Mm. Mm. For example, uh, when he was asked, uh, just when he was coming in, uh, what's your, your own vision for, uh, for Zambia? Mm. And then he said, no. Um, in terms of the vision for Zambia, I don't have my own vision. My vision is that of, of Michael Sata and, and the PF. Now, the clip that everybody comes and takes is that... He has no vision. I have no... I have vision. No vision. <laughs> <laughs> Yet he very clearly was saying that his vision is to carry on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Which yeah. he did do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> true, on. true. But it was in the next sentence, so people don't remember the next sentence. They don't remember the next <laughs> sentence, so they, 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 they do that. It's, it's similar to just recently over the... Issue free of free ed education. Over the issue of free education, mm. which they are overblowing and mm. what he said is that um, free education is uh, something is important. which is important. He's a product of free education yes. himself. Yes, and then uh, he said that, but at the same time as free education, it must be quality. I, he wanted to bring it to the stage of mm. Kaunda's free education. Yeah, yeah. Um, that it has to be quality. So when we do come in, will review the free education. Not reviewing to do away with it, yeah. but yeah. reviewing it to make sure that it's got... We, 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 we do not lose the quality as we are implementing the free part. Mm -hmm. uh, but then you've seen how they've uh, just bounced on that, seized yeah. that. Mm. And, and orchestrated <laughs> a lie that he, he says you'll abandon the policy of free education. Yes, he has never, ever, ever said that. Mm. Never. Mm. <laughs> you know? mm. And then even the 300 um, uh, students, uh, he didn't say in a single classroom yeah. there will be 300 of them. He was talking about the teacher-student ratio. Your population ratio, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That uh, you cannot have uh, that kind of ratio. He didn't say that there are, there are 300 in in a single mm. classroom, mm. <laughs> you'd need a lecture. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> true, <laughs> true. You, 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 you would. Um, your brother, Hakainde Ichilema, you meet last at that last election in 2006, and um, now, you know, 15 years later, he's president. What's your reflection of him? Do you see some qualities or weaknesses you saw then in your contest with him in the 2006 elections, as he carried them over. What is your reflection of President Akainde Ichilema? Um, you know, it's, uh, firstly, maybe let me say, whenever I speak about uh, President Ichilema, <laughs> uh, praise singers and others will jump up and say, ah, he's just bitter. Yeah. <laughs> he's, yeah. Mm. You know, so it's very constraining to to talk to offer about, your opinion, to yeah. offer my opinion. Mm. But perhaps let me address this uh, constant claim that oh, he's bitter mm. and so on. 
I mean somebody who's not of a bitter disposition. Um, it's for that reason that uh, um, I can go and represent uh, uh, Kenneth Kaunda, who is somebody that I was campaigning against. against. Um, it's a, a reason why um, you'll find me going to State House when there's uh, national uh, events. Uh, if I was bitter, I would not go to a national event where being you presided probably, over. You probably <laughs> bounce, uh, you know, meet. <laughs> where, where I, not probably, where yeah. I do meet. Yeah. <laughs> I actually yeah. uh, uh, do meet. Um, if I was bitter, mm. uh, you, call, you recall that uh, President Hakainde uh, had that uh, case regarding the janja weed uh, uh, in Dafoe. Yeah. He was facing those uh, sedition charges. If you remember, who was his lead counsel? You were. Who is the one who saved him from those charges? Mm -hmm. It was me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that is something anybody can go and Google and see. Mm -hmm. If I was bitter, would I go and save him from prison? <laughs> no, no. In you fact, know. you may not need to worry about uh, the the accusation of bitterness. It's uh, something, some means out they throw at all of us. It's a common thread by the praise singers. They'll just come to your page and say, Mamba, you are bitter because you are recalled from Addis Ababa. If it is you, they'll say you are bitter because you lost an election with each lemma. They, it's, it's one common line. I think it's a way to discourage us from saying our views and our position. You have a new baby. If, that is if you finished analyzing President Akainde H. Lema. Um, yes, so I, I, will, I, would, uh, I would say that uh, the weakness that he does have yeah. is um, he perhaps overrates himself. He does have uh, qualities, there's no doubt about that, but he overrates himself. Um, Anybody, there's nobody who can be Mr. Know-it-all. Nobody at all. Uh, and uh, he needs to take time to actually listen to as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. And I do mean listen, yeah. um, not photo opportunities. Mm -hmm. Because at the moment, we see a lot of photo opportunities. He'll call in uh, the church, mm -hmm. there'll be these photos of him with them. Uh, he'll call in Osida, photos with them. He'll call in all kinds of different groups, the chiefs, photos with them. But you never hear, apart from the photo, that how he made this in the photo, what was discussed, yeah. what was resolved, what was agreed, that is not there. Always absent. It's always absent because they are merely there as photo opportunities to show people that I'm, I'm meeting people. <laughs> you know? um, Archbishop uh, Mpundu stated that at the Osida meeting. meeting, when they went there, they thought they were going to discuss, but they went there for a lecture. For a lecture, yeah. It's and, on record, yes. And, said and that's that. a testimony of many. Mm. And that is what most of them say. So um, he needs to stop and start listening. It's very, very important. Mm, mm. He should be the very last one to speak in a meeting. Mm. Not the first and last. Mm. First, middle, and last. <laughs> 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 no, that quality is clearly missing of listening. He wants to talk and lecture. Talk and lecture. You have a new baby in the United Quacha Alliance, and I think it's apt for you to do so. Because you literally helped form the United uh, uh, UDA, the alliance in 2006. You were instrumental then in the alliance with the PF in 2006. So when we see you form this United Quacha Alliance, UCA, what has motivated you? In fact, you appear to come from political retirement because you've been quite quiet the last four or five years. Uh, just speak to this idea and why the alliance. 
Maybe let me start with the quietness. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, it would appear from the outside that um, I've been quiet. Um, because unfortunately in Zambia we have this impression that um, you're only relevant politically if you are president, mm. you know. If you're not president or trying to be president, then you are irrelevant. But I think uh, politics has got many levels and many angles from which one can uh, operate it. And uh, we cannot all be wanting to be, uh, at any particular time, all be wanting to be president. Um, I've been very active uh, politically, um, although you may not see it. Sometimes you have to do things behind the scenes. Mm, mm, yeah. mm. Um, for example, uh, Human Rights Watch. Uh, Human Rights Watch was basically formed from activities here in Zambia. Mm, mm. Way, way, way back uh, in the uh, late uh, 80s, early 90s. Uh, and Human Rights Watch was born from Zambia, not by Zambians, but by the organization coming to Zambia. By the way, Human Rights Watch is this global, you know, human rights um, organization, and it's very, very important. So you are disclosing that it was actually formed here. Not uh, formally Necessary, but, formed here, yeah. but it, it got its uh, uplift internationally and so on by the activities regarding looking at the situation in, in Zambia. Zambia. Mm. When they did come here, one of the people who was uh, very much behind giving them the information and thing was myself. Okay, okay, okay. And uh, after that, they became big and all that and everything. So even uh, now, I do... You still work with them? Not formally working with them. Mm. I still supply them information. I don't mm. work with them. Mm. I, but I, I give them information and pointers mm. as to things that may be going wrong. I hope you give them information that Emmanuel Mamba was tortured. No, you don't need to answer me. I'm just... Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, after that, it's not just the uh, Human Rights Watch. I decided that, well, we need to be changing what is going on in the country politically. So I formed what is uh, called Coalition for uh, Defense of Democratic Rights, CDDR. Mm. A lot of people don't know it because we do things very, very quietly. Behind the scenes. Behind the scenes, but very, very, very big things. Okay. Um, you remember the International Parliamentary Union came to Zambia um, and, and not uh, too long ago. Uh, I think uh, 2006. Mm. The person who caused them to come here was myself. Mm. Mm. I decided that, well, um, politically, let me take this to the international stage and uh, bring in people. Um, what I'm saying can be actually uh, verified and confirmed mm. by Honorable Jack Mwimbo, mm. uh, Honorable uh, Garin Combo, Honorable Patrick uh, Mucheleka, mm. um, various others. Mm. Because their cases, I'm the one who took them to the International Parliamentary Union. Mm. I am mm. the one who took them there. All of those I've mentioned will confirm that they used to come to my office yeah. and I would write up their reports, <clears throat> uh, like with the Honorable Garin Combo. You remember when he was uh, arrested and uh, assaulted? Mm. Um, thing in southern province 
his medicals and everything. I collected them, sent them over to CDDR, mm -hmm. uh, by, by CDDR to International Parliamentary Union, also to the Commonwealth Parliamentary Union. Uh, Commonwealth Parliamentary Union also uh, uh, did acknowledge what we had done, but International Parliamentary Union went further by actually sending a delegation, a delegation. to come mm -hmm. and investigate. They spoke to the speaker, they spoke to the IG, they spoke to the Minister of uh, Justice, they talked to various people. Um, and that caused a, a difference in terms of how the government was uh, working and also how they were perceived from outside. From outside. Mm. So it was uh, about 20 uh, different MPs that I represented. Mm. Majority of them were actually UPND. Mm. Okay, you had others like uh, Honorable Saifwanda, Honorable Kenneth Conga, mm -hmm. and, uh, and others. Those ones were, were MMD. Mucheleka then was an independent. Mm -hmm. um, all of those, go and ask them. Yeah. So you, it, to be effective, you don't need, need to, to be necessarily seen. be seen. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure Honorable Mucheleka was grateful for the work I did yeah. and will acknowledge yeah. that it did make a difference. Mm -hmm. Even Honorable Gary Combo, I'll be yeah. surprised if they say, no, 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 it didn't make a difference. So you have been busy. <laughs> I've been Although busy. Although the last five years you've been doing work behind the scenes, yeah. what, what would probably not attract media attention. So why who come? Well, things have gotten so bad that um, I think that it was time to come from just doing things behind the scenes to actually uh, become part of a visible uh, set of people offering alternatives. Um, that it had come to that time. That's how bad things are, that mm. it has drawn me out from uh, the so called retirement. The, the so called <laughs> retirement. <laughs> into what the, things are bad? Um, Define the, them. Just look at uh, the state of the economy, the cost of living, the, uh, the, the constant deterioration of the kwacha dollar rate. Um, look at uh, the regionalism, which is uh, starting to manifest itself. Uh, all these uh, groupings that you see being highlighted, the Umozi Kumawa, Chaitwa, Kola Foundation, Barotsi, all those things all of a sudden coming to a boil means something is wrong. Something needs to be done. Something needs to uh, make sure that these things do not overboil and uh, lead to very ugly situations. There's nobody who can say things are fine. Mm. Look at the number of times you have uh, queues for midi meal. If the midi meal is there, you find there's a queue. Even for bread, you're getting queues. Look at issues like um, even those who go and buy the midi meal. You'll find that uh, it's as if, um, like usually in, uh, in the West and so on, you'll have a pool... Uh, cars that uh, you and your neighbors will decide that okay, we'll use one car mm. to get to the city center, you know, and you all so fuel and also the, fuel. The, the cost that takes you to the middle center, yeah, to CBD. Yeah. Mm. So you'll have the full car. Now, the situation in Zambia is so bad that you'll find that those people who are queuing up to buy midi meal are actually going to have poor midi meal. What I mean is that four or five of them, because they cannot afford 300, 400 kwacha, yeah. can only afford 80, 90 kwacha, will put their monies together. Go and buy that one bag of midi meal. That's why I'm saying like poor yes. midi meal. Buy that one bag of midi meal. They go to the sidewalk after they've bought it, and you find them taking out uh, plastic bags and so on, and they start dividing 
the sharing the millimeter, sharing the millimeter but, yeah. and they go there different directions. Having a situation of poor millimeter, those are the ones who are in fact lucky. Majority cannot even afford Ford. to do mm. that. Majority have to buy a Pamela. Mm. It is now uh, such a pervasive thing that even big stores like Pick and Pay officially now uh, are repackaging, are repackaging mm. and selling Pamela's. Mm. That shows you that definitely things are not okay. You'll find that if um, you, you get up early in the morning, 5 a.m. or something like that, like maybe you're going jogging or something like that, or maybe you've got an early morning flight at the airport and you're driving there, you will find streams of people walking from long distances, maybe walking from Kaunda Square or Chelston, walking to town for work because they cannot afford, afford transport. Transport. Mm, mm, mm. You'll have people coming from way out, uh, you know, even from uh, 10 miles, walking to town. So they get up early in the morning, 5 a.m., they're walking to go to town. That cannot be right. People are really suffering. So clearly, something needs to, to be done. Mm -hmm. And UCA, you think, is the answer? I'm not sure. I'm definite. <laughs> 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 the political parties are available now. Are you making persuasions for more political parties? And is there a space for members of civil society, trade unions? How is your engagement? Yes, in fact, the uh, United Quacha Alliance um, will, will be once the, the constitution has been approved by the Registrar of Societies, uh, will make it uh, very public. But one of the things which is uh, in there is that it's open to all political parties. It is open to uh, civil society. It is open um, to NGOs. It is open uh, to churches. It is open to marketeers, associations, students, uh, association. It is open basically to every single Zambian. Ah, okay. You've taken the unique idea to register it. Why? You didn't register UDA. UDA was registered. We oh, registered. you registered it. We registered UDA. You registered it as a political party or as a... We registered it as an alliance. Okay, okay. So it was... Uh, so legally there is room to register. Legally there is room. If they allowed the UPND and the FDD and the UNIP to register UDA, there is no reason why. So UDA why. was registered it as was. a legal entity? It was. Ah, I see. I just so happened, in fact, to, to have its uh, registration certificate. Yes, yes. yes. No, you need to show us because, uh, you know, recent history escapes our people. Someone was telling me that why is UCA registering uh, itself when UDA was not registered. I don't know whether your camera can. Yes. That. Okay, so it, the it United Democratic Alliance, UDA, was registered. Was it registered as a political party or as... Um... It was registered as an alliance mm -hmm. and uh, the members of uh, the alliance, mm -hmm. the UDA alliance, were the three political parties. Mm -hmm. That is uh, FDD, mm -hmm. uh, UNIP, and uh, UPND. Ah, okay. Uh, I asked that question because on the um, clearing of names, we saw that you were trying to register it as a pressure group. So there were a lot of legal questions around there. Yes, this was a, a pressure group as well, UDA, okay. an alliance. It was and a pressure group as well. So uh, there is no reason at all Mm -hmm. uh, apart from the fear they have of uh, UCA. Yes, yes. <laughs> because here, UPND itself was part of, of uh, UDA. Yes, yes. So we're going exactly like What this. you did in 2006. What we did in 2006. 2006, 
uh, MMD was uh, confident of itself. It wasn't afraid. It didn't put up any hurdles <laughs> to the registration of UDA. We're hoping that uh, UPND is as confident as MMD was, was in 2006, in 2006 and quickly register you. But no, I, thank you for clearing <laughs> that matter because the, you probably have seen the debate on the internet and I'm glad that you armed yourself to come and clear this matter here. Um, as we come to this, to the end of the conversation, and I have gladly enjoyed it, we've looked at our country through your lenses, through your political experience, through your many years at the bar uh, as a lawyer. What are your last words and what are your aspirations for our country? Um, I think that uh, my aspirations for this country is that uh, people should not lose hope. We have a country which has got a lot of wealth. We have um, a resource which every day we look at, every day we walk on, every single day. That is our soil. That is the greatest resource we have. People uh, have got this thing about all oh, the mines and the minerals and so on. Yes, they are important, but that is a wasting asset. Eventually, it will no longer be there. Our soil will always be there. If Ukraine can be a country which supplies the majority of the grain for the world, for the whole world, and yet Ukraine physically is smaller than Zambia. Ukraine has got weather patterns which are not as favorable mm. <laughs> as Zambia's. If we concentrated in terms of developing our agriculture, we would have a renewable, constant source of income. We would not have uh, this situation where people are uh, lining up for midi meal because it's not available. So as Zambians, let us look for people who will have cast a fresh eye on solving the problems of Zambia. People who will not believe that they're the only ones who know but people who will be willing to listen to everybody, people who will put their heads together because of the love of Zambia, because of the need for us to refine our various ideas into a fine product that will serve all Zambians. Oh, and wonderful. people of Zambia, Uka is going to fulfill that role. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Just the last one. Which president made you state council? Um, the one who... Uh, conferred, yeah. No, no, the, the conferring is a long process. Okay. What happened is, uh, when you are to be state council, first of all, you apply. Mm -hmm. uh, Ministry of Justice looks at it. The attorney general, if he feels that, yes, this is okay, will send the name to the judiciary. The judiciary will have all the judges... Uh, look through and uh, state if they have any objections, all the judges. Mm. After that, uh, it goes to LAS. LAS uh, council will convene, will call the existing state councils to meet. To come and review the application. Come and review the application and see whether or not uh, they agree uh, that this person should be conferred with that when that is done, all these various steps have been fulfilled. The name is then sent, submitted. submitted to the president. And the president will then uh, confer you with that. In my case, uh, what happened is, remember I told you that I was constantly meeting uh, with President Wanawasa? Yes. At one of our meetings, uh, President Manawasa said, Saki, why don't you apply to be a state council? I said, I, I've really never thought about it. He says, yeah, you should. You know, 
I think you, you deserve to be. So that started in my mind. I said, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and this was just a few months before he, he passed on. So I then put in uh, my application. And if you look at my application, you'll see the date is for whilst uh, President Monawasa was there. And it was at his instigation <laughs> that yeah. I did so. Yeah. So the process was begun. And by the time the final process had reached, by that time, President there was another Monawasa president, was another president, Rupia president, Banda. president Rupia Banda. And uh, I was called, um, I conferred with that honor on the same day as uh, uh, State Council Abudi Shonga, who was being conferred with the honor because that was the appointment uh, President Banda made as Attorney General. Well, there are few that uh, get it by virtue of the office they hold, such as Attorney General, Solicitor General, uh, PPP. Uh, the Director of Public Prosecutions. Yes. Those get it by appointment. Yes. But the reason mm -hmm. I was bringing in that is to show you how soon it was after yeah. President uh, uh, Banda had come in. So it wasn't uh, because of President Banda. President mm. Banda found the process and... And the way. Just coming to an end, in mm. fact. Mm. <laughs> That's mm. how come it was so soon after he... He had become president. He had become president mm. that it was conferred on me. Because mm. some people say that, oh, no, 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 it's because you campaigned for him. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, that's what I sought to clarify when I asked the question, and I'm glad that you've, in fact, educated us how the process is done for those who are non-constitutional office holders. No, with that, I think my, my duty is just to thank you for sparing time from such a busy schedule. I've been trying to have you in the last two weeks, and I'm glad that finally you spared time to to meet us. I don't know what you do over the weekend, whether you play soccer, you're going swimming, or playing golf, what do you do? Now I've really got very little time for myself <laughs> because of Uka. Uka is a, a really um, a big project, and we are all very committed to, to it mm. and want to make it work. And thanks for having me on the program. I, I, I hope you, you, you invite me again. There is one issue I'd really like to tackle, and that is subsidy. Oh, yeah. oh, subsidies. Yeah. Oh, you know, we have this special one-hour program where we are not profiling you like we've done today. And uh, there are many times when we call you, there could be an agent, legal, political, or in this case, you have special time for subsidies. I would like to invite you because it's a contested area economically. You have people on the left that says you need subsidies. On the right, they say you don't need subsidies. But somehow our people are suffering. So there should be some middle ground somewhere. And that I would like, we have a date then. Yeah. I'd like to assure people that uh, subsidy is not a dirty word. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. Because yeah. it's cast as being a dirty word. Like so. in 2001, free education was a dirty word, mm -hmm. you know, like we said. And subsidies also appear to be a dirty word. So mm -hmm. you, you are welcome, sir. You have an appointment with me. So with, with that, I would like to thank you again for sparing time. And to our viewers, um, uh, thank you for enjoying the podcast and thank you for the feedback. Continue to give comments. There's something that keeps on recurring and people don't seem to understand. That Emmanuel, you are talking too much on the podcast. <laughs> no, this is not an interview. Your former interviews, I ask a question and then our guest answers. This is a conversation, and I will participate in the conversation, but of course, to the extent of not interrupting our, our guests. So it's a conversation, and you know, I'm not an interviewer. I am participating in the, in the debate, hoping to clarify for you who is out there. So with those few remarks, God bless you. God bless our country. God bless Zambia. Shalom, shalom.